In this season of Advent, we are waiting and longing. And hundreds of years ago, the prophet Isaiah wrote to a people who were waiting and longing in exile. And while these feelings are part of the human experience, they are sure for all of us. What's even more certain is the faithfulness of God. So here today, these words from the prophet Isaiah, who come to us anew this day, from Isaiah 40. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in their arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Wonderful words, huh? Well, good morning again. It is good to be together. And at this time of year, we certainly know that we would be gathering here. This place would be filled as we're hearing children singing and preparing for Christmas and experiencing all that this season brings together. And so know that you are missed. Know that it is difficult to be apart this year, at least physically. We can be together through our wonderful gift of online streaming here, but uh, to physically be together, we certainly miss you and send our very best to you. And I know you send your very best to us as well. In fact, before getting into today's message, I just truly want to give you a word of thank you for all of your prayers and support, your cards and well wishes, your thoughts at the death of my mother. Uh, On behalf of Pastor Kristen and our family, we truly do Thank you. We are uplifted and supported by your thoughts and prayers. We can really feel them. We, we did have our funeral service this past week, and even in the midst of this unusual time, an unusual way of doing things, it was a, a very good service. Good to be together as close family and to go to the cemetery afterwards. We were blessed with a beautiful day for December. We had sunny skies and mid-40s and no wind, and to, to be out at that cemetery... It was hard, but it was very very much a holy moment for our family to say goodbye to my mom. So thank you again for being a part of that, for joining us in this journey, and for your thoughts and prayers. So something else I did this past week is talk to a pastor friend of mine who made me aware of a new term in this time of COVID-19 pandemic, and that term is doom scroller. Doom scroller. Perhaps you've heard of this term. It's a, a term used to describe someone who 
scrolls through their news feed looking for bad news about the pandemic. Or maybe scrolling through their social media feed looking for bad news that happens in people's lives. I mean, as expected, certainly this can affect someone and their outlook on life. It can affect their behavior. It can change appetite, either a loss of appetite or overeating. It can cause a lack of sleep. It can cause feelings of depression and hopelessness. In fact, you know, I didn't realize how common this is. A cartoonist by the name of Tommy Siegel came up with a cartoon about this doom scrolling earlier this year. Here, here it is for you. The first panel, it says, ah, bedtime and quarantine. And then the next says, time to turn off the lights, get cozy, and doom scroll till dawn. <laughs> I guess that's the other side of it. We saw the coziness in our children's message today, and, <laughs> and now we have the doom scrolling till dawn. So this doom scrolling is a real thing. You know, I bet that if social media were around in the time of the prophets of the Bible, they'd be known as doom scrollers. You have John the Baptist, who we commonly hear at this time of year, who prepares the way of the Lord, who is always saying, repent. In the gospel, he says, even now the axe is lying to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. He is definitely a doom scroller. And likewise, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, before he gives the words of comfort and hope in today's reading, he speaks harsh words of judgment and warning against Israel for, for turning away from God and not acting justly towards the poor. Again, he's a doom scroller. But now in today's reading, in chapter 40, Isaiah changes his tune. Now he offers words of comfort and hope to the people of Israel. You see, the nation of Israel has been conquered by the neighboring nation to the east of Babylon. The Babylonians have come into Israel and they've destroyed Jerusalem and its holy temple. They have captured some of the Israelite people and brought them back to Babylon to be in exile for 50 years. So these Israelites were defeated. They were living in exile and they were in despair. Living in a strange land, they were losing their hope. And into this hopelessness and despair and the doom of the exile, Isaiah says, Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Make way in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight a desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill shall be made low. Isaiah went from being a doom scroller to being a hope scroller. And don't we need words like that right now? Words of comfort and hope. And are we not like those exiled Israelites living in despair and hopelessness? On this second Sunday of Advent in the year 2020, public health experts are warning us that we are in for a very hard winter. With the pandemic raging on in the United States and surging in many parts of the world. And thanks to the scientists for their heroic efforts, we will soon have a vaccine which will be available. But it will be several months before it will be widely available to all of us. And we are people continuing to suffer with fatigue, fear, and loneliness. 
our situation is similar to those who first heard the words from the prophet Isaiah in today's reading. God's word, which comes in the midst of a situation full of hopelessness and despair. The people are living in a strange land, far from home. But there is a dim hope on the horizon. The power of Babylon is fading. But still, these people are living in great suffering and anxiety and displacement and waiting. And likewise, our situation is similar. We are living with a dim hope, a hope of a vaccine. But still, right now, we are waiting. And we experience uneasiness, anxiety, and fatigue. If there was any time in which we need comfort, it is now. What we need is a hope scroller and not a doom scroller. And this is what the words of Isaiah 40 give us. Words of hope, comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. God says to those in exile, God is coming to you in the midst of your exile, and God will bring you home. God will bring you home through the desert. You see, between Babylon and the homeland of Israel is a vast desert. It is one of the reasons that Israel could not return. There was this great desert between them. But here Isaiah says, God will beat you in the midst of the wilderness. God will come to you in the midst of exile and bring you across the desert. God will make a way home for you. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every mountain will be made low and every valley shall be lifted up. And God does the same with you. How do you come through an exile in your life? How do you come through a difficult time? Maybe it's illness or addiction. Maybe it's depression or loneliness or grief. Or maybe it's just plain old fatigue. Whatever exile you are experiencing right now, God meets you there. God meets you there. God gets to you in the midst of your exile and God brings you home. The word of God that was spoken to those exiled Israelites long ago, we are told by Isaiah, is a word of God that stands forever and is a word of God that is spoken to you as well. Here is your God. That was the main proclamation in today's reading. Did you hear it? Here is your God in the midst of exile, in the midst of the wilderness. Here is your God. God meets you in the exile. See, the Lord God comes with might. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and he will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The Lord God comes to you and meets you in your exile and cares for you and gently leads you home. Pastor Kristen and I have shared with you, you may have heard us share in the past, about a college friend of ours, Professor Deanna Thompson, who was diagnosed with cancer back in 2008. Since then, she has been in and out of remission three times, and just this past October, the can she found out the cancer has returned again. But back in December of 2017, she wrote a blog 
Looking back on the December when she was first diagnosed, she writes, Right in the middle of the most wonderful time of year, right when silver bells were ringing, I was diagnosed with incurable stage 4 cancer days after my 42nd birthday. Rather than decorating a tree at home, I was living at Abbott Northwestern Hospital, spending my days being wheeled through the halls from scan, one scan to another, one radiation treatment to another. In those early days of December, those who loved me understood the severity of my condition better than I did. They wept and I remained wordless, unsure about how breast cancer could break two of my vertebrae, about why and how breast cancer had spread to a dozen places in my bones. In a season that's dedicated to celebrating, we found ourselves in a season of sorrow, of mourning, of lament. As is the case for anyone who endures a traumatic event, the world looked different to me after my cancer diagnosis. My first public outing after being released from the hospital was to attend a Santa Lucia choir performance sponsored by the American Swedish Institute. Both my daughters, ages 12 and 9 at the time, were in the choir. This centuries-old practice of singing in the darkness suddenly looked different to me. The story of Santa Lucia's suffering and martyrdom made an impact on me as we were gathered in that downtown cathedral. At the darkest time of the year, we remember the life of a saint whose life was marked by hardship. We gathered into a space alight with candles and singing, a ritual that holds the season of sorrow together with the season of hope. On that dark December 13th in 2008, I wondered if it was the last time I would see my girls sing in a Lucia performance. I felt with aching clarity the power of the young voices singing that dark away, even as the darkest seemed at its most powerful. At its worst, deep, prolonged suffering can overwhelm. It can crush. It can rob us of the ability to see the season as anything more than dominated by awfulness. During those early days of December 2008, it often felt like there was simply no way I could endure the cancer that had been ushered into my life and into the lives of those that I love. But as I continued to be granted more time to figure out how to live with this advanced stage cancer, I have grown more aware of how this season of joy is very often also a season of sorrow for so, so many. It's a time to mourn lost health or a time to grieve that one who is beloved to us, who will now be absent at this year's holiday gatherings. All this may sound like I'm counseling against laughing and dancing and singing and celebrating during the season of glistening snow and holiday cheer, but that's actually not my point at all. I must confess that this is actually my favorite time of year, a time where I'd love to be dancing and laughing and embracing all that is good. It's just that moving into the land of the unwell has made it much more difficult for me to ignore the amount of sadness that also accompanies this time of year. One of the gifts that we can give each other at this season of lighting, illuminating darkness is to acknowledge and make space for the occasions for lament, not only in our own lives, but in the lives of others as well. I worry that many of us feel pressured to only talk about or make room for the happy aspects of the season. But when we acknowledge that it's also a season of lament, I have found that we can more fully enter into the joyous occasions because there's room enough in this season for both. We need hope scrollers and not doom scrollers. We need to bring hope to others and to this world. Hope that God meets us in the midst of our exile. 
And this is not a hope that diminishes the pain or diminishes the lament in our lives or in the lives of others. But it is a hope that meets us in the exile, in the pain, in the lament, and brings us home. It's a hope that is present in the midst of darkness with a light that breaks into our lives. Such is Advent faith. Such is Advent hope. May we pray. Almighty God, it is amazing how we hear these words of comfort from Isaiah long ago, but your word stands forever and they are a word for us today. A word of how you meet us in the wilderness, how you meet us in the exile of our lives. You bring us home through the way that you have prepared, and that way being Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, we pray that in our own lives we can be hope scrollers rather than doom scrollers, not diminishing the pain or lament in our lives or in the lives of those around us, but bringing hope to those around us. We thank you for your words, your words of comfort, Humble. Amen.